Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. If you guys are new here, welcome to my motherhood channel where I take care of all things mom. In today's video, it's actually part two of now a three-part series of my party prep for my daughter's fourth birthday party. We did the Frozen theme. So in my last video, I did mention that my next video, which is this one, would be decorations and activities, games and prizes. But I had over five hours of footage to cover for you guys and there was no way I was gonna make it into a reasonably length video so that is why I'm splitting it up into two videos and so we're, this party prep is gonna be a total of three videos make sure you watch closely because there will be a little surprise somewhere in this video and let's get to it So let's start off by looking at some of the activities that I planned. So I had, I think, five activities that were just out in the open for everybody. Some were on the tables, some were at stations for the kids. And so I just really wanted like people to have something to do if they didn't wanna just sit and talk, if they are, you know, busy bodies. So one of the first things that I made, and this you can make way ahead of time, was ice block chalk. Now I've made homemade chalk paint before in the past, and you just use cornstarch and water until you get like the right consistency. If it's too thick, you can add some more water. If you think it's too like runny, and see-through you add some more cornstarch and you can always add food coloring to make it any color of your choice but I just made this little mixture poured it in a little ice cube tray and added some popsicle sticks and froze these I ended up doing like another batch later on and stored them in a recycled ice cream container <laughs> and then during the party whenever I felt like maybe the kids wanted something else to do I brought these out and they just kind of colored on our little patio I just can't let you go Lord knows that I've tried to You said I was the only one No one likes being like to You made this mess and left me with the pieces Moving on, uh, we have some troll art. So in the movie Frozen, we have these stones that like become trolls or the trolls look like stones or whatever. So I had some rocks on hand from Dollar Tree. I had some little Dollar Tree pens on hand. So I thought I would just pour these rocks in a little frozen basket that I picked up from Dollar Tree. Can you tell I love DT? <laughs> and, you know, made some sample trolls myself uh, to inspire anyone else and just let this be on the table. Now, some people just decorated rocks, you know, non trolly and that was totally fine. But people seem to enjoy this little activity. Next up, we have snowman shooters. So ideally, you want to use a white paper cup for this because styrofoam is a little bit weak. But... The styrofoam worked. Um, you just have to be very careful when you're putting this little balloon on top of the cups. And so um, you cut out the bottom of the little cup, you tie the balloon in a knot, and then you cut off like the other opposite end of the balloon and put it on like a beanie on the little cup and then you can decorate it and make it look like a little snowman and then what you're gonna see is me um, put like a little fluff ball that I got from one of my decorations that you'll see me prepare in a later video um, you put that in there pull the balloon back and it shoots your little snowball out of the cup which is really fun I did make little instructions with like pictures where I got the inspiration offline and I ended up laminating this and leaving it with the stations. I have a laminator, I'm like very teacher vibes so I just, I felt like being extra and laminating this. Also to make sure that it doesn't like fly away, get ripped, that way people actually have the instructions and they will last throughout the party. I did laminate some other things while I was at it, like my menu and activities and games, and I left these on the table so that people could see what was available for food and what was available throughout the day or what to expect when we were gonna play games as a group. 
Moving on, we have sensory snow. Now there are a bunch of recipes online for making your own fake snow, but this was probably one of the most popular and one of the most realistic feeling in my opinion. So you just use shaving cream and baking soda. I got these big things of shaving cream at Dollar Tree and I didn't end up needing all of them. I think I only needed like two or three for these three big boxes of baking soda. So you just mix them until you get a consistency that you like. If you feel like your little fake snow is too wet, you can add some more baking soda and then just continue to mix it in. I did prepare this at least one day in advance and I did a test run like a week or two before just to make sure that the consistency would stay the same like over the course of a day. So I did make this the day before and just stored it in some containers to be put out then during the party. So I was making a lot of this fake snow and my plan was to kind of use it for cleaning after the party since it is mostly baking soda. I did pour this in this little table, made a little snowman as decoration to get started. And then what I decided to do, be warned, this was a horrible idea. I poured water and then I put like big floating chunks of ice in there because I was like, oh, you know, Kristoff likes to, you know, get the ice out of the water. And I figured the kids would rinse their hands like you see them doing here. I thought it would work out well. Well, Aubrey had the great idea of pouring like all this water into the snow and it just created this huge slush. And the kids were having a blast, but it was a total mess, total disaster. Uh, I would not put those two next to each other again if I were to do it, but the snow was a hit but it just didn't last very long. So moving on, one of the other activities that I had just out on the tables was a design your own snowflake. I used a little template that I found online and then I made like a sheet of instructions with like picture guidelines for the kids to kind of follow if they don't know how to read or don't have an adult helping them. And um, I did notice that some people were making their own snowflakes, but it didn't seem to be super popular among my crowd. But those are the activities that were kind of throughout the party. You could do whenever, if you could not do it if you don't want, whatever. Moving on, we're doing the games. So I didn't film these things during the party because my family you know, likes their privacy, but we did do a snowball scoop. So that is where you are blindfolded and in a minute you try to scoop as many cotton balls into your bowl as possible. Next up we had what I considered like the big game that would be for the adults. It was matching snowflakes with their templates. And I did have a tiebreaker made out in case, you know, people just came up to me at the same exact time with the right answers. We didn't end up actually needing to use this tiebreaker, but I did use it just as like an extra activity for anyone who was interested in trying their best to to create the template for the given snowflake. And to reduce my level of stress during the party so that I didn't have to remember all of the answers, I did print out an answer key for my reference. We also played Pin the Nose on Olaf, which was fun. So this was my cheapo version of black vinyl. So if you are a cricketer, and you are gonna be using a design for like a day and you don't want to use your expensive black vinyl, you can use wood grain contact paper from Dollar Tree and then just color the cutout with Sharpie and it looks pretty much like black vinyl. <laughs> so that is what I did. I cut out Olaf and then I made like a million of his little carrot noses, all of the same size. They fit perfectly into the nose of the design. And then I assembled the little pin the nose on Olaf like poster board. Now I had all of this stuff on hand. My whole goal for this party was to try to create as much as I can with the stuff I have on hand and not spend like a ridiculous amount of money on decorations, on activities and whatever.
Now, obviously, if you don't have a Cricut, you could easily try to draw this by hand. It may not look perfect and that's okay. I, you know, have a Cricut, so I figured I might as well use it. I did try sketching out Olaf on Aubrey's little like birthday present and it wasn't perfect. It wasn't like, you know, to my liking. So that is why I went ahead with the Cricut. You can see I cut out the pin the nose on Olaf using the wood grain and it does like look different from the Sharpie covered one. And you really can't tell that I didn't use black vinyl to cut out Olaf. So I'm really happy with this technique. I think I'm gonna be using it again in the future if I, you know, am only gonna be using vinyl for like a short amount of time. Anyways, moving on, uh, we're gonna play with, do you wanna build a snowman? Everyone, all the kids, anyone who wanted to participate was given three marshmallows and asked to stack them using only their mouth um, like a snowman and the first person to do it won. So at the beginning of this video, I mentioned there's a surprise. On the screen here is the first part of an Amazon gift card code. The next and last part of the code will be in my next video where I talk about all things decorations for the party. So make sure you guys hit that notification bell so that you are like the first one to log in and see that video when it goes live. This gift card is really just a way to say thank you to you guys. I know that only one person is really gonna be getting this gift card and if I could give one to everyone, I would. I appreciate you guys so much and it just means the world that you come and watch my videos and support my channel and you know give me thumbs up and words of affirmation in the comments it really you know warms my heart and means so much to me so thank you and congratulations to whoever is the first person to claim this card again the second half of the code will be in my next video so make sure you write this down and stay tuned for that one to go live So let's go ahead and talk about the prizes. Um, I had some of these on hand and then some I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I really liked the little pencils that like, you know, when you run out of the lead on one, you stick it on the next. That was really cute. I went with freeze dried strawberries for a reason. And for the grand prize that I thought, oh, maybe an adult would like this prize. I made this little like yarn kind of Christmas tree artwork and it was you know pretty easy I used almost all Dollar Tree supplies except for the paint I had that on hand from Walmart from like a couple of years ago so that was the one thing I didn't get from Dollar Tree but you could essentially replicate this little piece of artwork for yourself especially with you know the holidays eventually coming up I'm sure some Christmas stuff is already in stores now so it's yeah you know, it's not too soon but it was really easy you just kind of wrap the yarn around your fingers like a bunch of times and then then you take another piece of yarn and tie off like kind of in the middle of your loops and then trim one of the little edges to make it like kind of fringy. Then uh, I made a bunch of those and glued them on my canvas. It was looking a little, you know, raggedy, so I did take some scissors to kind of, you know, trim the tree and just make it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing but it was really simple to do. And uh, this ended up being one of the prizes for the game where you have to match the snowflake with its template because that was the one game that I kind of envisioned the adults playing as well. The center of my tree was looking a little bare, so I did make one more little tiny fringy loop thing and glued it in there, and I really like how this ended up turning up. I think I might make more just for decoration around my house. Moving on, we have the goodie bags. I just tried, you know, it's kind of convenient that Aubrey's birthday is before Halloween because you get those like candy sales. I did get some little chapsticks, uh, like Frappuccino style or soda style for the guys. And the Jolly Ranchers I originally bought mainly for my cake. So I separated out the blues and purples and everything that was left was gonna go in the goodie bags. 
I tried my best to make sure every goodie bag had the exact same candy. Not everyone got the same flavored Otter Pop, but you know, I figured that would be okay. And then Aubrey really wanted her own little chapstick. So she picked the strawberry one and she has kept it in her room, uh, kind of more as a toy rather than a chapstick. So we did have a lot of candy left over, so I made this into a coronation chocolate for our food video you guys saw. And any of the kind of remaining goodie bags, I figured we're going to give them away to our very first trick-or-treaters as a way to say like, hey, thanks for being our very first trick-or-treaters in this house. So I'm looking forward to doing that for Halloween. But we have, you know, all the goodie bags just kind of out on the table and using this little sign that I got from Dollar Tree a long time ago, just kind of said, you know, thanks so much and um, put some other decorations there. So again, speaking of decorations, that will be my next video. We're gonna do a whole bunch. I'm really looking forward to sharing with you guys all that I did. I really put in a lot of effort and I think it was because Juan was on paternity leave. So that's why I got so much done. But make sure you guys stay tuned for that video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you guys are new. I would love to have you stick around and I will catch you guys in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.